welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we're going to be speaking about the most common questions that I get from law students or aspiring solicitors. So I'm going to get straight into it. First question is usually, should I get a job as a paralegal? Yes, you should get a job as a paralegal because I believe that it's important to actually experience the job itself and the nature of work that you're going to be doing before going and doing your masters for example or doing the LPC or SQE. Why put yourself through that and also financially if you don't actually know 100% what the career entails and even if you can't get a position as a paralegal, then I would just advise to do some work experience. You can apply for vacation schemes and a vacation scheme is one week or two week placement at a law firm. And it usually results in getting interviewed for a training contract. You can also just get legal work experience. You can do that and you can just directly contact smaller firms and find out if they do any legal placements or work experience just for a week or two um, because you're helping them out and number two you're also benefiting yourself by finding out if this is the career for you so as to whether or not you should get a paralegal job yes i think it's very important so second question that i commonly get is whether to do the SQE or the LPC. Now, the time of this video, I think the final cohort for the LPC is actually now. So I do believe that after this year or this intake, it is actually, it's just going to be the SQE that is actually running. Don't quote me, but I do believe that's what it is. So, I mean, your options, <laughs> It's quite black and white, so if you're not doing the LPC now, then yes, you should undertake the SQE. So, third question that I most commonly get is whether to do the SQE after the undergraduate degree or to get a job as a paralegal or just a job within a law firm so it could be a legal assistant a team assistant um a pa so to get a job at a firm get the experience and then undertake the sqe now the answer to that is there's no right or wrong you can do either i would say quite difficult it's actually a quite difficult one purely because if you're coming from a law background, so as in you did law at undergrad, then you'll have a little bit of an advantage on the SQE because you've already studied and you already know like the topics because you've been doing that in your three or four year degree. So then potentially, yes, it does just make sense to go straight on to the SQE and you could get a part-time job or maybe i would advise that you do get um some type of work experience before undertaking sqe so yeah so before applying for it see if you can actually get um some type of placement to just make sure that that is definitely what you want to do before actually signing up and enrolling onto a course I would say people that know that they want to practice as a lawyer, as a solicitor, then yes, just start the SQE straight after your undergrad degree. It makes sense. And a lot of people just want to get it over and done with. Me personally, when I was going through that process, I did the LPC straight after my degree. I did my master's. I did it in a year. Um, and that was full time. And that was purely because I just didn't want to do it part-time over two years um, and I just wanted it over and done with so that's what I did but it's just dependent on what works for you some people want to work and want to get a job so them doing it part-time might actually work out better than just doing it all across um, a one-year period or two years for the SQE so you've just got to do it 
um, however best works for you really and truly. I would also say if you are in a position where you have been paralegaling and you've got experience then yeah then you can literally just if you've already done the LPC you only have to do the second half of the SQE2 and that might work better for you because you might also know the area of law that you want to qualify in so it's very subjective it depends on the person um so yeah as I said there's no right or wrong and you've got to do what is best for you when it comes to that so the fourth most common thing that I usually get is whether I should just focus on applying for training contracts and not get a job and just focus on doing that um, and seeing if something crops up and when I say getting a job I do mean something within the legal sector so again understand the training contracts they date that <laughs> I can't speak training contracts they do take a lot of time the applications they take a lot of your time drafting them reading over getting other people to have a read of it and then amending it there's a lot that goes into it and especially if you're doing multiple applications but I do think it's important to be out there and being proactive with your time whether that is volunteering or you've got a part-time job um and making sure that you are also doing these applications at the same time because unfortunately it's what you've got to do and a lot of us aren't in a position where you can afford to not actually have a job and work um, and just focus on applications where if you are in a position where you can do that then by all means do that but for a lot of people they do have to do it at the same time as working and you've just got to be organised and productive and just manage your time um, to be able to get these applications complete and submitted on time. Fifth question is should I do 20 to 30 applications or should I just stick to doing around 5 or 10? So personally I know a lot of people do say just apply to firms that you like apply wherever just do the applications you could have a lucky application and you only need one yes and there's nothing wrong with that it is true you do only need a one yes from a firm however it doesn't mean that that one yes is going to result into a training contract so I do believe that the detail and the time and the effort that you're putting into let's say five really good applications will be a lot more beneficial and add more value to your like progressing through your legal career than making 30 applications to random firms that you've literally just <laughs> you've just seen on the internet and you've just come across you've never heard of them before but you're applying for the sake of applying in hope that you're gonna get a yes from that firm I personally think spend your time focus on 10 let's say 10 10 or less firms submit those applications because those will be your best applications and where you will notice that you'll get further through the process with concentrating on doing 10 really solid applications than doing 30 and you're just getting straight rejections and you're thinking oh this is a waste of time I'm never gonna get a yes and it's because you're not putting as much detail and time into the applications they're probably just copied and pasted and you're just adding the firm's name and just amending it a little bit so I would advise just focus on 10 and yeah that's what I would advise so final question is is there a point in paying for the SQE myself when I could potentially just be applying for training contracts be successful and the firm's gonna fund it for me so I would say if you want something in life you need to go and get it you don't wait for somebody else to hand it to you. you should be the one 
that's putting in the work to get whatever it is that you want and it's not to say that you can't do the latter but if you want to do something then you should do it which is if you know that you want to do the SQE if you know that you want to do the LPC and yes you could be worried about um, financing it but you can get the student loans if you don't want to use a student loan then obviously you've got to look at alternative options or you're going to self-fund it whether you've got to look at the wider picture how long are you going to wait until a law firm yes to you and process could take a very long time like i don't know how long it's going to take but you also don't know how long it's going to take whereas you could just get it out the way if you're in a position to do that and still be applying so yeah if you really want it you'll get it and you'll do what you need to do to get it so those are the six most common questions that i usually get around um just uh, the legal the legal life let's <laughs> let's put it that way so guys i hope this is really helpful and i hope you enjoyed the video and i'm excited to um yeah to bring some more content and a lot of different content there's going to be a lot of traveling so i've got a lot of traveling coming up so um i'm just really excited to take you guys on my journey and also on my legal journey so if you have any other questions or any other topics you want me to do a video on then drop a comment in the below section and please subscribe but i hope this was a really insightful video and thank you for watching see ya